The first time I saw the neutral buoyancy lab was as a kid watching the movie Armageddon, when a bunch of oil riggers learned how to become astronauts so they could save the world. When our team wheeled in our big trucks full of supplies, I could feel the theme music in my mind and try to think that in some way we're going to try to save the world from other underwater accidents. It's breathtaking uh, to walk into the facility and see everything that that is being tested. It, it gives you a sense that your project is important because you are testing in, in such a place. Uh, and it also gives you some sense of accountability, right? Because you're at NASA, you're like, oh, this has to work well, or we have to get some good data out of this. My lab has been working on a new way for robots to be able to tell how far they are away from each other when they're underwater. My name is Aaron Becker, and I run the Robotic Swarm Control Lab here at the University of Houston. SSI has been very instrumental in helping us meet some of the local businesses here in Houston, an energy capital of the world. And these companies are looking for different ways to improve their underwater robotics capabilities. There are a lot of resources under the ocean. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to access those. And so there have been many advances in robotics over the last few decades. But we are trying to augment that autonomy by giving the robots a sense of where they are in relation to other objects. The standard methods for communication between robots don't work as well underwater. So radio transmission dies very easily. Cameras really only work well if you're in a, in a nice, beautiful pool where everything's clear. Uh, and acoustics has the problem uh, of multipath fading, so it bounces from many, many places and the data can get corrupted. Magnetic transmissions are a new method for sending large amounts of data underwater because they are less susceptible to environment parameters. And so what we have made are some magnetic induction antennas. And it works by taking three coils that are each 90 degrees apart from each other and having one set of these coils at the receiving robot and one at the transmitting robot. One of the main challenges at the beginning was to be able to get a transmitter that could deliver enough power. So we had to design and build our own transmitters. Uh, and then after that, we started doing some tests in, in air where we were looking at the voltages that were received at different distances. Uh, and then eventually we had to move on to water to see how that affected the performance. There are a lot of challenges that came up uh, pretty much as soon as you put anything in water, a lot of things stopped working well. The tests that we did at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab were some rigorous examples where we had them at known positions and then we were measuring the radio waves in this body of water. The benefit of using the NBL is that it's a very large pool. It was very uh, a great moment when we dropped the ROVs and we could control them and it was so, so nice. It was actually probably the best that we've ever controlled them because the NBL pool, uh, the, the water is also very still and it, it, it reassured us that we were going to be able to do some good testing. The goal of our experiments is for the robots to be able to measure their relative position and also their orientation. How are they pointed in the water? We put some 2D barcodes on the robots. And that's because at the NBL, it's outfitted with a number of cameras so we can measure the precise positions of the robots in real time and compare that to the experimental data we get on our robots. When I dropped the ROV into the, uh, for the first time in the NBL, it felt like I was dropping the ROV for the first time in any pool. I knew that it worked, you, you, you're just hoping that nothing will break immediately. It's a combination of uh, being excited, of being anxious, but overall it, it's a fantastic experience as a researcher. So one of the biggest points when it comes to working in the subsea is safety. Using the magnetic induction technology, uh, we're hoping to improve the ability of the robots to avoid collisions with each other uh, and with the environment and thus be able to work better in a more safe manner. To safeguard the infrastructure, divers that might be present, and the robots themselves. So we can't do this alone. We're very grateful for the help of the University of Houston, the Subsea Systems Institute, the State of Texas, NASA, the National Science Foundation, and BP.